All right, well, hello, I'm Chris, and this is my removing rust with molasses video. Now, in this video, we're going to compare a feed grade, farm grade, to a store-bought food grade, and then we're going to mix them in different ratios, and we're going to try to find out which one of these removes rust the best. So let's get started. Ideally, you want this farm grade, feed grade, like for animals and horses. You have to get this at a feed store. Here in Houston, Texas, they didn't have one. I had to drive 25 miles northwest just out of Houston, to a farm feed store like where they sell hay and stuff and they didn't even have it available where you could buy it i had to drop a container off come back the next day they fill it up charge you 20 cents a pound so that whole five gallons was 15 dollars. now on the other hand this not this might not be available for everybody and you're most likely going to end up getting like a food grade at a grocery store but you see the price difference 18 freaking dollars three dollars a bottle and that's all we have to work with so this is a food grade you see the ratio we mix it. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how much you're gonna be able to get out of each bottle. So there's no confusion there. So just showing you that, just so you know, well, this is the food grade from the store. Feed grade is gonna be for the animals. One to nine is what I see mostly on the internet. That's a great ratio if you have to buy the expensive stuff. I have access to this, so I wanna see if we can mix it uh, thicker and let's see if it works faster and that's the point of the video to see if that store stuff even works I don't know. I have no idea. I've never done this before Okay, so let's try to put in perspective what exactly we're gonna get out of one bottle How many bottles is it gonna take to do five gallons things like that first of all one of these is 12 ounces So let's take 12 ounces on our measuring cup. So not very much at all So if we're gonna mix it one to nine, let's go ahead and par put nine parts and see where this even takes us okay so you see that that's nine to one using one of these so you kind of get how much you're gonna need now we get our custom measuring cup this is our pitcher for one to nine every 12 ounces of that we're gonna add one of those for one to nine you kind of get how expensive it's gonna be to use this stuff now we're gonna do our one to five which is god damn so do you see what i'm doing for you guys out there i'm trying to put in perspective how expensive it may actually be to do it with the little bottles like that that's not a big deal we can get a lot done for this 15 bucks but we got 12 dollars in each bucket and that's all you're going to be able to do i'm going to go ahead and call it that they are all going to do exactly the same thing but honestly i, I want to say that this farm grade is going to work better but I really think it doesn't matter. These are the kind of parts we're trying to remove rust from. This is what I call heavy rust. These are 69 Chevelle bumper brackets that they may have been coated when they were new. I don't know, but they've been heavily rusted. This kind of rust is very expensive, time consuming and annoying to remove. I've always done these with sandblasters and it's time for a change. So 12 ounces of this. mix it up real good okay so that's the front bumper bracket all right so now the one to five okay all right heavily rusted bumper brackets so for the food grade we're just pouring we already mixed it we're just pouring three bottles in really that's where that saying comes from the store-bought stuff actually looks alien like It just took me 15 minutes to get those six jars into a solution. So that's something to think about big time. I'm not ever using those little ones ever again. I don't care. It's not worth it. Okay, so we got a backing plate from a 70 Chevelle. Get smaller at the bottom. So we're just going to do half. That's fine. So we're just going to check these every single day. We're just going to pull the part out every day until it is completely rust free. And we're going to go through this whole video and figure out which one works the best. So fast forward, it's a week and a half. The things just started to work. See how it's getting all nasty. I made these buckets on the 13th and it was actually 40 degrees, 50 degrees outside. And these things didn't have time to ferment, but they're actually just now starting to work. So whenever it starts getting nasty like that, I found this to be the perfect brush because it gets in the grooves and you just kind of want to break that top layer because if they're heavily rusted it's not going to be able to penetrate so you're going to have to do this it's not that bad it comes off real easy 
but I found out if you don't do this, it's not gonna take the rust off the way you want it. It may if you leave it in there for a long time. Okay, so this video has just completely 100% changed. In my videos, I like to put things in perspective, okay? I'm not trying to show off a magical act, you know, nothing like that. I'm trying to put this, this process in perspective so that you know what to expect and you know if this is something that you wanna do or not. Okay, so I was fooled by videos on YouTube acting like this was a two or three day process. It's not a two or three day process. This stuff's been here for three weeks and it's not even halfway done yet. So that's what's happening is that the rust is iron oxides, two parts iron, three parts oxygen. And all it's doing is breaking that bond and leaving those iron, those two irons in suspension in that liquid or whatever and releasing the oxygen as gas. So it does work 100% ultimately the ratio does not matter which whenever you mix this is just a wash bucket i was using it's probably one part molasses 60 70 parts water and it works too so it doesn't really matter the concentration the biggest problem with this is that there is no consistency in the result we're just going to put this all in a big blue drum and leave it there the main problem with the molasses is that you're going to have to take them out about three to four or five times and wash the stuff off these parts have been in here for a month and you'll see that the results are not 100% consistent but let's take a look at the brackets now so that's one month very freaking awesome results but at the same time it's been a month same thing here is it worth it so far absolutely it just takes a long time so let's see how long until it completely comes off Explaining this to you so you don't think that you're going to just do molasses rust removal and go straight to paint and i'm going to say it over and over and over these parts have been in since december 11th 12th or 13th it's january 25th right now we've taken them out washed them off with water and you can see they have a big residual of whatever the crap that is going on and they're already starting to rust again so i'm just making this video to really show you that you know whenever you get these done it's a whole nother process to get this crap off and i'm actually making the video too of what to do after molasses rust removal and the only thing i can find out is you're either gonna have to put these in an acid or some kind of something to break that layer off or sandblast them in the video uh, we just lightly sandblast them it takes about five percent the effort that it normally would five percent or less than it normally would to sandblast those the old-fashioned way makes it so much easier and we're going to end up doing the same thing to these but just letting you know you're not going to pull these out and scrub them with no soap and wash them off with water and coat these absolutely not 100 percent not going to happen so i'll make these videos to let you know what to really expect and that's really the only downside to molasses rust removal it does a great job but it doesn't get every single bit of it off and then now you got to get this layer of crap off well that's it for the video if you enjoyed please like and subscribe Thanks for watching.